Hi, Todd here from Urban Sound Studio, and today we're talking about analog summing. I want to share with you my five top reasons that I use an analog summing workflow, and then we'll take a look at how to set it up in Pro Tools and in Logic Pro. Now, for years, I worked entirely in the box. It's easy to do, it's inexpensive and doesn't require the purchase of additional hardware or cables, and you can render your mixes offline instead of in real time. But let's see why I like to use analog summing. First is headroom. In your DAW, you're combining signals with digital math. In the analog world, you're exporting to analog hardware, which you can push harder. You do not risk clipping your master the way you do when working entirely in your DAW. It gives you a lot more freedom and it sounds a lot more open. Second is workflow. I like using some of my outboard gear and when working in the analog world, it's easy to connect. Just put your stereo bus processor on your out and then record it back into your DAW or set up a patch bay and connect multiple units. It's also nice to be able to move a fader, adjust a pan knob or even a plug-in while printing your mix back into your DAW. This feels creative and it's a nice way to do things without having to automate every single parameter in your DAW. Third is monitoring. And I'm not just talking about monitoring in the control room where everything does sound more open but I'm talking about monitoring for the artists. When you're sending cues out to headphone mixes and using headphone distribution systems, you can now use any sample rate you want since you're already in the analog world. There are limitations when using a digital connection. When you go above 44 and 48K, you start to lose some of your cue counts. Since you're already in the analog world, you could send these analog cues to the artists without having to worry about latency or sample rate. Fourth is stereo width. If you like reverbs and delays and modulations that feel wide, they're going to feel wider and bigger. And when it comes time to just panning in your mix, what used to go from here to here now feels like it goes from here to a wider, bigger side. It's something you just have to experience. And last is color and saturation. When you're taking all of your tracks and bringing them into the analog world, you can push them harder and hear them combine in a way that they just can't do in your DAW. Some summing mixers, like my Rupert Neve Designs 5060, actually have the ability to impart different types of color into your mix. And it does something that you really can't capture with just a plugin. So let's see how to set up an analog summing workflow in Pro Tools. This session has a lot of tracks. I have lead vocals, background vocals, guitars, two basses, drums, effects, and my master out. If I hit play, I'm clipping. I need to pull all my faders down about 12 dB before I could even begin setting levels. Sending my tracks to multiple physical outputs will begin to help my workflow by providing more headroom in the analog world. I'll start off by sending all of my similar tracks to a separate bus so that each group can be controlled via an aux track. Even if I was staying in the box, I would set this up in order to process the tracks as a group where I can easily trim levels or add bus processing to those groups. I'll need to create six stereo aux tracks to receive the audio from these buses. And while I'm at it, I'm also going to create a stereo audio track, which is where I'm going to eventually print our final analog summing mix. Make sure to keep organized with clear colors and labels to easily identify tracks. When we hit play, we now have individual control over our groups of tracks. But we're still clipping our master fader. Let's send our buses out to our summing mixer. By combining these buses in the analog world, you will see that we could take advantage of more headroom. I'm sending out to four stereo inputs. So my setup is to send out vocals, guitars and bass, drums, and effects. This is great for a summing mixer that has eight mono inputs or four stereo pair inputs. When I hit play, I don't have any sound on our master as none of our sound is routed back to the master output. 
I need to make sure to set up the output of my summing mixer to the input of my print track. This will allow me to hear and record analog summing back into Pro Tools. Now you can see we are no longer clipping our master output. My Rupert Neve Designs 5060 has 24 inputs, so I'm going to take this even further by sending out each aux to their own input. This gives the benefit of having even more headroom available while separating tracks even more for better monitoring, better opportunities to route to headphone mixes, and the possibility of processing buses with hardware in the analog world. Now just hit record and record your analog summing return back into Pro Tools. Upon playback, you'll notice that we're only hearing the print track through our master out. This means I could process the master bus after printing with any processing I want. For me, this means I could treat the master bus to match other songs on my album, or I could just avoid master bus processing while tracking, which sometimes leads to latency issues when dealing with plugins. And when you're all done, exporting your final mix is easy, as all the processing is baked into the track for a quick export. And for those of you looking to create stem mixes, it's as easy as creating a few more stereo audio tracks and then just solo your auxes that you want to print at the same time. Now let's take a look at how to set up an analog summing workflow in Logic Pro. We will send our track outputs to the appropriate buses. One nice thing about Logic is that it automatically creates an aux track for you when you output to a bus, so the routing is already done. This time I'm going to make an extra vocal bus. We need to go in and rename these aux tracks to stay organized. By holding Option and clicking the letter C, I will make sure to have a separate color to easily identify each track. Once again, my tracks are clipping my master, so I need to adjust the levels. Now, let's output our audio to the inputs of my summing mixer. Logic does something unique. It creates an output track for each physical out of the DAW. This can give you a second location to adjust gain, but for now, let's stay organized by renaming these outputs to match the corresponding aux track. We will also need to create a stereo audio track to which we can print our final mix. I like to be able to rearrange my aux and effects tracks so that I can arrange them as I want. In Logic, you need to select these tracks and then right-click them. Click Create Track, and you can now reorder these tracks in the arrangement view. For this example, I'm going to put my print track at the end of my session so that it's easy to find. I'll make sure it's stereo, and then set the 5060 as my input so that I can record the summing back to that track. Hit record, and you're now able to print the audio from your summing mixer back into Logic just as you did in Pro Tools. When you're done, solo your print track and you'll be able to hear your final print or add plugins to your stereo output. All this is done while taking advantage of the sound, workflow, and headroom that Analog Summing offers. Thanks for watching. Do you use an Analog Summing workflow? If so, let us know your workflow setup in the comments below or any tips you have. Also, please help support the channel by liking this video and hitting that subscribe button.